Good morning. Welcome to Ask Coffee Online. My name is Chef Cesar. Today I'm going to prepare for you a red snapper Veracruz style. This is a very classic dish from the eastern southern coast of Mexico, along the eastern uh, along the Gulf Coast. And this fish is very uh, abundant along the Gulf of Mexico. So we use red snapper. And uh, we're going to cook in the pan. I'm going to get to in a little bit. But I want to explain to you when you go buy fish what to look for. And uh, I mean, the fish will be nice and fresh. This I just got them this morning. And the eyes are very clear. That's a good sign that the fish is you know, fresh. Also, the gills should be nice and red. I took them off. They're being gutted and clean, but the gills should have a bright red color. Also, the flesh should be nice and firm, not mushy. And uh, if they come with scales, a good way to take them off, you know, you want to maybe get a uh, big enough container to uh, put some cold water. And you want to have the fish uh, submerged in the water. And then you're going to take a spoon and go from, if you don't have like a scaler, you know, to take the scales off, you can use, use a spoon and go from the tail uh, and kind of scrape through the front. And this is how you're going to take them off. And if you keep it, maybe I used my, my sink this morning. I kind of put enough cold water to, to submerge the fish. That way the scales not flying everywhere. If you do it on the table, you're going to make a big mess. And it's not, you know, once they dry up, they stick and it's hard to take off. So if you, you know, Sometimes you can find the scale, but if not, it's a good way to keep your area nice and clean. Now we're going to start by, you know, making a marinade for, uh, to uh, marinate our fish. And uh, I already have my ingredients cut up here. And th there's a lot of Spanish influence in this dish. This dates back to pre-colonial time. You know, the cooking method. Also, there's uh, olives and capers that gives the Mediterranean, you know, flavor. And also, there's a lot of Spanish influence. So this is a uh, dish that has a lot, of, like I say, Spanish influence from Spain and uh, so we're going to start to make our marinade. I got some um, chopped garlic. I'm using about one clove of garlic for the marinade. You can use more if you want, okay? Also, I'm going to use some, uh, some cloves. Just uh, sprinkle some cloves. And the white pepper here. Okay. Now I'm going to uh, cut up some uh, limes. I'm using about two limes. The juice of two limes. And when you marinate this fish, you want to keep it in the refrigerator for about half an hour. That way the flavors, you know, soak into the flesh. Okay, there's no seeds in my lime, so I'm going to squeeze. And this dish has been, you know, named after the state of Veracruz, and it's like the, you know, the state dish. And I know some of us get turned off. Some of you, I, I should say, I love to cook whole fish. But, you know, down in Mexico, especially, you know, cooking whole fish is very popular. You can, you know, bake it or, you know, in a salt crust. And also in the Mediterranean, you can see that. Now we're going to add a little more water, about, like, I don't know, a couple of tablespoons. Okay. We're going to mix a marinade real nice in here. Okay. I'm going to put it to the side. Now I'm going to. Score my fish here. I got a dish where I'm going to put this fish. You just want to kind of cut straight down in the uh, thick part of the flesh. We do this so the marinade can uh, penetrate. And also when we cook it, the heat can uh, get in there and uh, it cooks much quicker. So I'm going to be cooking this on the pan. It's not going to go in the oven. It gets cooked right on top. Okay. Now I'm going to have my fish over here. I'm going to pour my marinade over the top. Okay, I'm going to... Okay, this time I'm going to kind of flip it over. I'm going to really work it in there, okay? In the inside. I mean, you can also bake this fish, but you can, you know, with different ingredients, you can, you know, stuff it with some fresh herbs or just, you know, rub it with some olive oil, salt, pepper, and bake it. Now, at this point, you know, you want to cover your fish and uh, refrigerate for about half an hour or even to an hour before we started the cooking process. I already wanted, uh, did one ahead of time, that way I don't have to wait that long. But before I get there, I'm gonna clean my cutting board with my uh, sanitizer solution here with some bleach and water. Make sure it's nice and clean. Okay. And now I'm gonna, this is my fish that's been marinated for a while. Okay, you can see it's a little bit bigger than that one, so we're gonna pretty much cook this uh, fish whole in the pan. Look at that! I'm gonna show you. 
Okay, we're gonna dry it up a little bit. That way, when we start cooking, this, this the oil is not gonna splatter everywhere. So it kind of, you know, dry the fish a little bit. Okay, put some uh, salt here. I'm gonna start my pan over here. I'm adding some uh, vegetable oil or some corn oil, whatever you want to use to just uh, saute the fish. Okay. About a couple of tablespoons. Okay, we're not really frying the fish, just cover the bottom so it doesn't stick to the pan, okay? You can see I got all my ingredients over here. I got some fresh tomato puree I did. I use some fresh tomatoes. I just peel them in puree with some little oil, some water, and that sets fresh. You can use canned if you want, but fresh is always better. I got some onions, some pickle jalapeno peppers, my uh, spices. I got some herbs here, like fresh uh, thyme, some bay leaves. I got my oregano capers. There's a lot of ingredients that go on this dish, and it's gonna cook in a pan. I'm not gonna put it in the oven, so if you have a lid, you wanna cover the pan. So it cooks really nice. So we're going to start by, you know, frying the fish a little bit. Okay. Make sure the oil is nice and hot so it doesn't stick to the pan. Okay. Okay. All right, we're going to drop it in there. You can hear this one. And you want to get a pan big enough so it's like kind of the whole fish fits in there. I'm going to put a lid over the top. I got my half cheese pan. I don't have a lid for this pan, but one of these will work too. So that way you can uh, stop the oil from splaying everywhere. We're going to keep it in there for about a minute or so, and then we're going to flip it over. But now I'm going to cook the fish completely in this. I'm going to, you know, make the sauce with it. All the ingredients are going to go in there too. Okay. You can see the skin kind of came off. Okay. I'm gonna take the fish and put it to the side because I'm gonna add. I got my onions here. About a half an onion you wanna do for this. The garlic. If you have a non-stick pan, that would be good too. That way, there's like the skin won't stick to it, won't stick to the pan. Okay. I'm gonna add about a cup of our chicken stock. Okay, about a half a cup of my tomato puree here, okay. a little more, okay. then we're going to put the fish back in there, because we're going to cook the fish in the sauce here, so we're just going to stew all these ingredients in there. I got some bay leaves here. Okay. See the nice and green? These are fresh. That's why they're nice and green compared to the ones you buy at the store. They're like kind of little, you know, drier and they look a little grayish. My aroma tomatoes in there. Also got my uh, sliced olives here. I got about six you know, jumbo olives in there. 
Some capers, about one tablespoon of capers. Okay. Uh, I got some uh, my dry spices. I'm doing a pinch of uh, marjoram. I also got some uh, dry oregano. Look at that. I'm gonna put some fresh thyme. I'm gonna wait for that, and then a little bit more. I also got some uh, pickle jalapeno peppers. So I'm gonna cut them in half here. Those are pretty big. I'm gonna throw some of those uh, carrots in there too. Look at this. This is a really nice, uh, tasty dish. And also, it's very simple to make. It's not that complicated. I also want to add a little bit of this uh, brine here. Gonna give a nice little bit of it from the olive juice to just about one tablespoon. That's it. Now we're gonna cover this. So I want to add a little more salt here. We're gonna cover this for a while so it starts to cook. Keep the tail in there. I should have got a bigger pan. These fish are pretty big. They're about two pounds each, and not really that big, but, you know. And normally, this is how we do it. If you want to do fillets, I mean, it's not the traditional way, but if you want to fillet the fish, it's definitely going to cook much quicker. But also, you know, when you cook a whole fish, it gives a lot of, you know, those bones. It's going to give a lot of flavor to the, to the fish because we got a fish head, and since, you know, we use fish bones to make stocks, and this is going to be very flavorful like this in this very, you know, traditional, classic, you know, dish. And usually we serve this with some uh, Spanish rice, Mexican rice, or some uh, like a salad, you know, on the side, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to plate it, you know, with all the vegetables because it's a big, you know, it's a light ingredient. It's a big, nice meal, and you're really going to enjoy this. Now I'm going to throw one sprig of fresh thyme in here. We're going to let it cook for a while here. And, I mean, in the meantime, we could be making something, in, you know, like another uh, side dish. I'm just going to, you know, maybe cut some... Uh, so my radishes to like garnish my plate. starting to smell really nice okay We want to flip the fish over halfway through so that way it gets cooked, you know, on both sides evenly. Gotta, you know, cook more fish. You can get a bigger pan than this. You might be able to do two at a time. And you know, you can also, if you want, if you had an oven, you can finish it off in the oven. But I'm gonna finish it off in the stove top. You know, th that way you guys can see, you know, the whole cooking process. So I'm gonna chop some cilantro. That I'm gonna be used to garnish my dish at the end. And this fish cooks really quick, you know. As you know, seafood is very delicate, you know, protein, so it's going to cook very quick, and you don't want to overcook, otherwise it's going to start to, you know, break apart. Okay. Okay. 
I'm gonna flip my fish over here real quick. As you can see. I'm gonna put this cover back on. So it seems really good in there. And if you guys can't find red snapper, you can do this with like striped bass or other whole fish, but snapper is a nice, has a nice sweet uh, flavor. It's not that cheap, but again, if you buy them whole, a little less expensive because of course you buy the whole fish than if you were buying fillets, but you can fillet them yourself as well. You can buy the whole fish and you can use, you know, the bones to make a nice uh, stock, to make a sauce or, you know, for your fish. But again, you know, if you don't find red snapper, which is the, you know, since the fish is so abundant in the Gulf of Mexico, is what they use, you know, to make this dish. But you can also, you know, use a different type of fish to like striped bass or black bass, a nice uh, fish too. But this is the classic, you know, fish that we use to make this dish. And you can smell all the flavors from like the, you know, the olives, the peppers, you know, it's uh, really, you know, medley flavors in here. And you want to kind of reduce the juice a little more. You can, when, I mean, the flesh is almost done cooking. You can see it's nice and soft. And it doesn't take too long. I'm just going to cook a little longer so that sauce reduces some more before I take it out and, uh, and plate it. If you ever go down to Mexico, go to Veracruz, you're sure to find this uh, this uh, dish in every, pretty much every menu that you know around the Gulf Coast area with uh, a lot of seafood, it's very abundant, and you're gonna see this dish. It's, it's very popular down there, and maybe even here in some uh, Mexican restaurants you might you know seen it before. But uh, really, you know, it has, you have to have really nice fresh seafood to do this, because otherwise it won't come out too nice. And I was lucky enough to get some really nice uh, fresh fish. I got them this morning. Here we are. Already cooking them. We can see, flash is nice and done here. Be careful when you take it out of the pan, you want to use a nice spatula, otherwise, you know, if you grab with the tongs, if it's already cooked, it's going to break in half. So you want to be careful not to, you know, destroy the fish. You want to serve the whole fish in the platter for presentation purposes. Out of here. I'm gonna set her aside my plate over here. You can see, it's a nice fish. Now you got the liquid over here reducing. As you can see, there's a lot of vegetables in here. We just want to reduce a little bit longer. Okay. But you don't want to cook it too long. You want to kind of have it tomatoes, you know, the plum tomatoes kind of whole, but they're nice and soft, they cook very well. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to put my fish in my uh, platter over here. Okay, this is going to be my presentation plate. See, I might have tail should go over here. Look at that. It's gonna be a nice, nice dish. Okay, look at that. It's nice and done. Now I'm gonna taste the sauce to make sure it's got enough seasons. It's really nice. It's got a nice uh, kick, a little spice from the peppers. And be careful not to put too much salt in it because, you know, the olives are very salty. Uh, so it's the brine. I put a little brine in there. So you don't want to 
get it too salty. So it's uh, one of those things you got to keep an eye for before you add too much salt. You want to make sure that it uh, doesn't get too salty in you. Now look at that. Throw all the stuff on top. This is a wonderful dish. If you want to garnish your dish with some more olives, you might, you, you're able to. I think I got plenty of olives here because they're really big. I don't want to add anymore, otherwise it'd be too full of my dish because the plate's not too big. Now I'm going to pour some of this uh, juice over the top. Making that rice would be really nice because it would soak up some of this liquid in here. It's really flavorful. And it's kind of... Look at that. Okay. Now I'm going to put some of this cilantro on top. I'm going to put a little sprig of uh, fresh thyme in there. Just for color, I'll put some uh, radishes sliced around just to add a little more color to my dish. And look at that. A wonderful red snapper Veracruz style. And so easy to make. As you can see, it's like really didn't take too long because fish, you know, it cooks very, very quickly. So... Here you go. A wonderful dish. You're also going to be able to see, uh, have the recipe along with the video. So if you guys, you know, want to try to do this at home, you can do it. It's so simple. It's a very tasty fish. And don't worry about, you know, the bones in there. You can, you know, take, take the meat off the fillets and be careful. And then just, you don't have to you know, eat the heads or anything like that. Just eat the, the flesh off the fillet. You're going to have a wonderful meal. I want to thank you for being here this morning. I'll see you next week. Thank you again.